Okay, so we're going to be putting a clutch pressure plate, throw out bearing, and flywheel and rear main seal in this uh, Toyota Corolla that I've just recently purchased. Right here are my parts, the rear main seals inside the car. Um, bought these off eBay. Pretty cheap, I was less than like 150 bucks. I'll uh, try to be as concise as possible while I'm doing it. I'll try to go over the tools that I use and post it in the video as well. And then I'll time lapse the uh, boring parts and then only talk whenever I need to. So here we go. I think the first step is going to be obviously to get the car up on jack stands, set the emergency brake, and once I get that going, I'll come back. Okay, I got the car up on jack stands. Looks pretty good. Um, I always just leave the jack just underneath it, you know. It's not really, doesn't have any weight on it, but it's just there. Shook the car really well just to make sure nothing's going to fall. Got the tires off. Lug nuts are 21 millimeter. Um, next step is going to be to remove the battery, the air box, air cleaner box. And then, if I can get my camera on it. There's some shifter clips down there that'll need to be removed. I will, uh, I'll stop on that as well once I get to that point. Go back to time lapse for now. Um, still have the emergency brake set. And of course there's my part still. There's my rear main seal. I didn't have that in the beginning laid out. Um, all right. Okay, I was able to remove those clips. Um, they were a little harder than I thought. I had to spray them with a little bit of oil. Um, and I went ahead and just laid them up over here out of the way. Next thing I'm gonna do is remove the slave cylinder. So, talk you through that. Um, one thing I did before I even started on this car was sprayed a bunch of stuff down there with the WD-40. And, um, kind of seemed to help things but I guess I missed a spot well I wanted to stop for just a second because at first I broke this side of the uh, clutch line but if I did that it, it leaked straight down on the floor so I'm going to try to disconnect this side first and then see if I can raise the uh, loose end up above the reservoir. And in doing so, it shouldn't drip. Yeah, I can get it pretty close. So I'm gonna try to go that route. Just a little note I wanted to stop there and take take note of and let you know. Yeah, it comes up just barely above it. Um, I guess I could also, well, yeah, that'll be fine. I'm gonna tighten that one back up before I forget. Um, I apologize for my camera angle on some of this. Uh, I haven't done a whole lot of filming with this GoPro lately. And uh, not to mention my son had borrowed my other tripod and stuff like that. So I'm kind of kind of in a bind on all that. Um, having to hold it as I go. But I'm learning, that's the point. That's why I wanted to film this. Is because I want to learn, you know, just how the camera feels and stuff like that while I'm doing these jobs I, I, i'll get better as i go obviously but um just wanted to make a note of that i try not to talk too much in them just because i realize you're not here to listen to me you're here to learn how to work on a car so that's that okay so the next thing is after you get the slave cylinder loose and um that line broke free on it is you're going to want to remove the wiring harness and any grounds that are connected so uh i see one ground wire your main ground wire right there take it loose um look around here there, there's a little plug in i need to take loose and anything else i find along the way i'll stop and talk about it
Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is going to be remove the upper starter bolts. They're going to be a 14 millimeter, somewhat hard to see with the camera. Um, and I'm going to try to remove some of the upper bell housing bolts. Oh, they're so difficult to get with this little camera. I do apologize. They are down there, 17 millimeter. Um, and of course, I removed the ground wire. That was a 12 millimeter holding it in place. Okay, I got that upper starter bolt out. First, I was going to use a ratchet, but it was too difficult, so I just used a 14 millimeter wrench. Um, one thing I kind of do when I'm trying to take something apart is as I take it apart and lay the things on the right, and then as I go, I'll lay them further to the left. So, um, you have a little pile here, a little pile here, and I'll, I'll kind of try to keep them in order as I go. I'm going to start working on those 17 millimeter bell housing bolts. Um, it's going to be extremely difficult to get any sort of shot on them, so. If you're doing the job then you can see them and there's no way i'm going to be able to hold a camera in here to take those apart but um there's two here on top i'm gonna go ahead and try to take those out looks like i'm probably going to need a swivel of some sort so you'll just have to imagine what i'm doing Okay, so if you noticed, I removed that battery. Um, probably should have done it right out the beginning. I just kept set wrenches on it. I just knew I was going to arc one out across it. Plus, it makes a nice little caddy area for your tools. Um, I think I have most everything up here. Next, I'm going to drop down and remove the um, axle nut. And I want to say that's like a 30 millimeter 12 point axle nut. So, we'll see how that goes. Okay, I'm sure you probably saw me wrestle around with that axle in like just a minute. So, I wanted to stop and talk about that. Uh, what I wound up doing was just putting a little bit of WD-40 inside my impact. It was kind of dry, so it didn't have the power. And I thought the axle nut was actually tighter than it was um but it, it came right off once i oiled up my impact um hindsight's 2020 i probably would have done that with the uh car still on the ground right at the beginning that way that's why i put the tire back on it to give myself something to hold but uh yeah if i could go back and do that all over again i'd do it when the car was still on the ground and uh try to go ahead and bump that loose but just wanted to note that Okay, I've got that axle nut out, uh, tapped on it just a second, but I um, need to go ahead and remove the lower control arm bolts. Um, they're gonna be uh, 17 millimeters. And I'll take that loose and get that out of the way. Okay, I got the little three control arm nuts loose there. Next thing I'm gonna do is Get the tie rod end loose and then once i get that loose i'm going to try to kind of rattle it and see if i can't get that axle popped out so um, you'll see me remove the cotter pin here and remove that top nut and then i'm going to try to get up underneath and pop that axle out i may have to take the brake caliper off i'm going to try not to but if i have to i will um we'll see Okay, I just wanted to stop and talk about that real quick. Um, if you notice, I had to hit that um, axle pretty hard to get it to drive back through there. It was kind of dried up in there, so to speak. Um, I used brass, though, so I don't, don't tear up my threads. And just wanted to make a note of that. Uh, I'm going to get in there on that axle. There's no way you're going to be able to see it with the camera angle. So basically, I'm going to take uh, my little tie rod knocker and my long bar and get in there and pry it out once i do that it should pop out a little bit of oil may come out but no big deal okay um kind of skipped a step there 
I just want to talk about it real quick. I didn't drain the transmission fluid out. Um, I got a little bit ahead of myself. So wound up and spilling some on the floor and making a mess and having to clean it up with my work shirt. No big deal. Um, company pays for them. They'll, they'll clean it up and get me a new one. Um, yeah, put a, drain plug, put a drain pan underneath it. Pull your transmission drain plug, which is right here. Let that all drain out. Do that before you take the axle out so you avoid the mess um, like I'm having to deal with now. So got the axle out. Transmission drained. And uh, we'll start probably taking some more bell housing bolts and motor mount bolts out next. I'll update you as I go. Okay, while, uh, while I'm at it and before I forget about it, I'm going to go ahead and remove the passenger side tire and the lower control arm and get that passenger side axle out. It's going to be basically the same as the driver's side. So probably won't talk a whole lot while I'm doing that. I'll just set it on time lapse and uh, you can watch. Okay, so um, I removed the little plastic covers underneath here. I've got that axle out over there um, on the passenger side. I kind of slacked on my filming and talking there for a second um, just because it was there was a battery issue with my camera. Um, next thing I'm going to do is remove that starter bolt, that lower starter bolt. It's going to be a 14 millimeter. Um, and probably going to start working on some of these lower bell housing bolts. Um, start working on some of these motor mounts as well. It's going to get to the hard part. It's kind of hard to film and do all this at the same time, but I'll try to do my best. Time lapse it and stuff like that. Okay, so I removed the uh, little dust cover up um, up there so you can see the uh, flywheel now. I can get a good shot of it. It's so hard to... There we go. You can see the flywheel now. Uh, took the bolt or the nut out of that motor mount. Also went ahead and stuck a jack up underneath the oil pan with the gloves on it. It doesn't have a whole lot of pressure on it, so I'm not worried about denting the oil pan. Um, gonna try to work on that motor mount and get it broke free and just keep on plucking away and also remove that ground strap right there from the transmission while I was underneath here. Okay, so I got that motor mount pulled out of it. Um, and what I'm going to try to do next is up on the top, there's a bell housing bolt around the back side. It's like a 14 millimeter. So I'm going to try to, obviously I can't hardly show it, but all the way, way back down in there, there's a, what it seems, I think there's a 14 millimeter bolt. Maybe I'm going to see it from underneath. Let me crawl up underneath there and see if I can show it to you. If not, I'll just... I have to trust me that it's there. Turn it on here. Yeah, okay, so there there you see them. There's two more bell housing bolts. And uh, I believe they're 14 millimeters, so I'm gonna pull those next. And um can't hold the camera and do it so work on those okay so I'm getting down to the kind of final few things here um, there's a motor mount back in there it's gonna be a 17 millimeter bolt it goes all the way through it I have to put it on a real long extension to get it out. And then I have a motor mount up here that's holding me as well. So I'm gonna work on those two things for a minute 
and I'll get back to you after I get those removed. Okay, I feel like I haven't been talking much um, on the time lapse, but I did remove that main motor mount there. Um, got it out on the floor. Um, got the long bolt out of the one in the back, and kind of getting to the point where I'm probably going to start basically wrestling around with the transmission and uh, seeing if I can break it loose. It's going to be difficult. Uh, probably need another jack or something, but. I'll wrestle around with it, see if I can get it out of there. I'm just here by myself, so I don't, well, my daughter's here with me, but, um, so I'm going to start rattling things around and seeing if I can't get it to drop out. Come on, let's go Okay, so there's two bolts up underneath here that are holding the mount in, so I'm going to remove those two bolts and try to get that back mount completely out of there to give me some room. Okay, so there you have it. You got a transmission on the ground. It's about 10 p.m. Um, well, I guess I could check for sure on that time. But, um, okay, my daughter says it's 10.08. Basically, what I, the point I wanted to bring was, and it's probably going to be brought up in the comments, is that I did not remove the, um, I did not remove all those cross members underneath. So everything is still intact as far as that goes. I did completely remove that back motor mount uh, and the front motor mount, but I did not take that uh, rack and pinion out or anything like that. But I know a lot of videos do, and if you have a lift, you can do it that way, and I completely understand it. If I had a lift, I probably would, um, but I didn't. So you gotta wrestle it around a little more than normal, but it's just me here and um kind of wanted to bring that up because i'm pretty sure someone will say something about that in the comments um let's see there's my clutch pressure plate throw out bearing and all that right there i'll start uh disassembling that and try to set the camera up where we can kind of see what's going on there um pretty self-explanatory though once you get this far with it and at some point i'll take a break for the night and try again tomorrow because it's getting up into the night and I haven't had dinner. Hey, okay, I got the uh, flywheel and all removed. Um, let's see, I can't remember what size socket it was. It's going to be a 12.14 uh, millimeter on the flywheel bolts. And the pressure plate bolts were... Um, 6.12 millimeter uh i'm gonna knock out that oil seal uh, i want to take note that these had loctite on them when i removed them so i'll make sure we put loctite back on those um and i'll try to add the torque specs to the video whenever i get to that point i don't i think i may have them written down somewhere but we'll get to that later uh let's see knock that oil seal out and then i'm officially halfway through uh, one thing I noticed is that my new kit came with a pilot bushing, and I don't see a pilot bushing in there, so I don't know if it didn't have one or, um, yeah, it doesn't have one. Okay, I see over here on the input shaft now that that mm, that I don't have a need for a pilot bushing, so it's just rounded off. So that's uh, that explains that situation. Okay. Okay, that's going to be it for the night. Um, I'll pick back up tomorrow. I tap that seal in. 
Um, should have probably used the old seal right from the get-go rather than tapping it in with a piece of brass. But I was pretty careful with it. And then obviously when you pry your old seal out, you want to make sure you don't scratch your crankshaft. Um, that's it for tonight. I'm out of Loctite, so I can't put my flywheel back on. Plus I got a little oil in there on the thread, so give that some time to dry out. All right. Pick back up tomorrow. Okay, so I'm back at it again this morning. Um, thought I would just go over it real quick. Yeah, obviously I have the transmission out. Uh, there's all my parts over there. See, I have my rear main seal put in. Um, I'm gonna start the process of putting everything back together. Cleaned up my tools a little bit, got uh, some of the oil out from underneath it. And, uh, feeling a little refreshed last night i was uh didn't have much sleep so i was kind of running out of energy there towards the end and uh i get that way sometimes when doing these videos but anyways i think i'm about four hours in on this job pays six or something i don't know so i'm not trying to beat a clock just trying to get it done the best i can with um with what i have right now so let's see uh, i guess what i'm going to do next is bolt the flywheel on um i have blue thread locker so i'm gonna try to get in here and get that bolted on and go from there okay i'm getting ready to go back in i'm gonna clean this off with some brake part cleaner it has a little bit of oil on it the flywheel bolts torque at 36 foot pounds plus 90 degrees um so here we go Okay, so I got the flywheel back in place. Um, torqued those to 36 pounds plus 90 degrees, which uh, when I went back and checked them, they all kind of clicked right at about 70 foot pounds. Um, so one thing I wanted to bring up that I just now noticed is that this, this particular crankshaft and flywheel doesn't have a pilot bushing or pilot bearing, whatever you want to call it. And the clutch that they sent me in the lineup tool does have a pilot bearing obviously i think i talked about that um so there's some slack in here it's going to be hard to get this centered up um i'll just have to be real careful whenever i do it try to get it to the best center that i can uh, so i can get my transmission back on but that, that's going to cause a little bit of a problem you don't want to leave your bearing up in there you know, I thought, well, I can just put the little bearing on the end of the, on the end of this and stick it up in there, but then you wouldn't be able to get the bearing back out and the bearing won't tap up in there. So uh, we're leaving that out. There's no pur purpose in it, obviously, because there's no, this isn't machined to accept a bearing. So I, I don't know how many of those Corollas are like that or not. It doesn't matter. We're going with it. Um, and I'll go back to time lapse uh clutch bolts are 14 foot pounds and i mean the pressure plate bolts are 14 foot pounds the little bitty ones uh, they're about like a 5 16 thread whatever that is in metric and uh, i'm going to put just a dab of loctite on them and of course don't forget to loctite those i've already addressed that once i get that back on it's going to be transmission wrestling time and i'll probably just go straight on end to putting the transmission in there because there's not a whole lot to talk about uh i'll just probably leave it on time lapse okay so got the transmission in there um that was tough you know you really have to wrestle with it i had some i did it by myself but um it's tough to do it i'll be honest with you it was not fun um the main thing when you're putting it in if you do do it by yourself 
is on that back side you want to kind of tilt it up and make sure you get over that rear motor mount before you try to go that way and uh, once you get it up there you'll kind of feel around and it'll clunk right in i got lucky and uh, didn't have a whole lot of problems with that so um got my bell housing bolts in i'm going to start working on my back motor mount and my other motor mounts and get those back in place and i'll go back to time lapse for that just wanted to stop and update you as far as where i was at in the process but yeah if, if you're not if uh if you're by yourself it's a tough job getting that back in there for sure so from here on out i'm just going to be putting things back in place like for instance that rear motor mount is still still down there not connected um all right okay i just wanted to stop and talk one second while i was putting the motor mounts on um obviously i use a jack to line this rear motor mount up um do the hardest one first you know and that's just kind of a general rule when you're working on cars is do the hardest bolt first and don't tighten it all the way up i have the bolt in there but it's not tight um uh, and i've got to get the bottom ones in and i'll get them all started you know and get them close to tight and then i'll back them back off like a quarter inch that way you've got some play and everything if you tighten it up you're going to have hell getting the front one in but um same way with the bell housing bolts don't tighten them all the way up whenever you put them in just uh get them on there and uh you know leave them a little bit loose once you get them all started then go back and tighten them in some sort of sequence where you don't uh don't bind or pinch anything just wanted to bring that up while i was putting everything back together as you see me tightening stuff you won't see me tighten it maybe until the very end when i get them all in place then tighten them all up okay i was able to get all my motor mounts in this one here went in pretty well had the one here in the front uh i had two lower bell housing bolts that i had to put in um had a couple of uh bolts a bolt and a nut there to get that one in and now i'm going to start working on some more of the undercarriage stuff also had to put the starter in those are the two longer 14 millimeter bolts uh and i'm referring to the head size on those not the thread size like i should be but you understand what i'm saying next i think i'm probably gonna try to get this passenger side axle taken care of and get all that get all that put back together so we'll do that um one thing you know a person might do is go ahead and get their clutch slave cylinder back in place and get their clutch line back on pump clutch a few times just to make sure that your clutch fills correctly and that it actually goes up and down because if you had an issue now would be the time to take care of it so i may go ahead and do that now before i get any further and that's just bolt that slave cylinder back in place and get my line back in and get to pump in the clutch and see what happens just in case there's a big issue which i think will be okay though Okay, so I got the slave cylinder bolted on and everything. I got the clutch line back in place. And I filled the reservoir. Probably gonna need to wind up bleeding it, but I wanna just go ahead and start pumping the pedal to see if I can even get any pressure going. I do apologize for the light situation, but um, this is what I put. Yeah, okay, I have pedal. I'll bleed it when I get finished with the job, but I just wanted to make sure that I actually had a clutch pedal. It feels pretty good. Pump it up several times. 
work any bubbles in it down. Okay, it's always a good sign. And like I mentioned, I did that before I put everything back together because if something was to pop or not go right, you would definitely want to learn about it now. Check my reservoir yet, yeah, it's still full. I'm gonna go back to time lapse and probably go ahead and start working on this side over here. Get the axle back in, get all this put back together. Okay, I have everything back in place. Uh, one thing I wanted to note was make sure that you take a punch and tap in that, that little nut right there so it holds itself in place. Um, and uh, I used a hammer and an old Craftsman ratchet and just hammered it pretty good. And it went just a little bit past where it used to be, so I'm sure it's just fine. Okay, I have all my stuff from the passenger side, putting that axle in, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it over here. Put the axle, lower control arm bolts in, and the tie rod nut. And um, obviously put the tire back on the axle nut. Okay, so we got the tires on, all the stuff associated with that the axles in the next thing is going to be just finishing up the last few things here up underneath the hood clips and whatnot um uh let's see probably need to bleed that clutch as well i'm here by myself so what i'll do is just open the bleeder and let it gravity bleed for a minute and um then get it off these jack stands and everything Still have to do my shifter clips back there in the back, but getting there, working on the top side now. And lastly, most importantly, is do not forget to put in your gear lubricant. Uh, I believe it calls for 75.90 and exactly two quarts. So I'm going to put that in. I'm going to get it off the jack stands and give it a test drive. Still need to open the bleeder on the slave cylinder. Um, one thing I learned, this is one of the first uh, videos I've done. I guess I can turn the camera around. This is one of the first videos I've done um, of a car project. One thing I noticed is that I need a, a head mount or a chest mount on my camera. Um, it was really difficult throughout the whole process to try to get the camera correct and all that. So I wanted to talk about that. But anyways, other than that, you know, dryer just went off. Surely you figured out the basics of it. Okay, it's all over with except for cleaning up the tools, test driving, and bleeding the clutch. I'm not going to show all that. Um, battery's getting low on my camera anyway. So I want to appreciate you all for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you care to. Um, I might start doing this full time. You know, do some mechanic work and put the videos on YouTube. Um, I just kind of scrapped this one together. I thought, well, I'll try it. If it works, it works, you know and uh learn a lot of things while i was doing the video definitely learn a lot of things while i was doing the video so there you have it good luck with your clutch hope it helps you i'll try to edit edit the video the best i can to cut out the bad shots and i'll try to lighten up some of the shots that are probably going to be terrible where you're not going to be able to see um and next time i do a video i'll have a like a body cam or a head cam and then I think I'll have some sort of light that just sticks with the camera. 
uh, you know, doing this in the basement. It's uh, like 40 degrees outside right now, so I don't have good light. I'm really not set up here. I'm at my daughter's. Well, technically it's my house, but um, I'm up here at her place. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs>